Uh, what I'm going to talk about is this enzyme called methylthioadenosine phosphorylase. Um, it's kind of an important enzyme because um, the substrate, methylthioadenosine, is uh, generated from polyamine biosynthesis. And uh, it turns out that most of the adenine in cells, which is used for uh, uh, RNA and DNA synthesis, ATP synthesis, comes from salvage, which is due uh, to the, uh, the, this particular enzyme, which generates adenine as well as methylthioribicide 1-phosphate, and which is then converted in a series of steps to methionine. So cells that lack MTAP turn out to be methionine oxytrophs and also uh, have defects, uh, not defects, but now have to rely on de novo purine synthesis to generate nucleotides. So this bottom slide shows the, the, uh, the lesion uh, which occurs with MTAP deficiency, and that is now there's an increase in this coenzyme PRPP, uh, and uh, uh, this allows a nucleot uh, bases like fluorouracil and 6 thioguanine to be converted even more efficiently to nucleotides and be more potent anti-cancer drugs. Uh, where is MTAP located? What's important about this is that it's uh, frequently co-deleted uh, with the uh, INC4A and INC4B uh, at the 9P21 uh, locus, so that uh, this is a very common deletion in cancer, and MTAP is often co-deleted uh, and makes it a little uh, difficult to distinguish between the effects of MTAP deletion in these uh, tumor suppressors. What's important about MTAP is that it's deleted in a large number of cancers. And uh, there are a couple of cancers in particular have a very high uh, percentage of MTAP deficiency. Mesothelioma in particular, pancreatic cancer. There's new information in glioblastomas. Uh, it's uh, deleted almost in 50% of uh, these tumors. Pancreas have a high level of uh, MTAP deficiency. And uh, in T-cell uh, uh, leukemia lymphoma, there's also a very high level of MTAP deficiency, and that's an area in which we're particularly interested in. Now, uh, the question is, is MTAP a tumor suppressor? And there's some evolving evidence that uh, it may be, uh, in that the effects of, M of this P16 deletion homozygous deletion is not only due to the INC4 A and B deletion, but also MTAP deletion. And some of this evidence is that uh, it, it, there's um, instances where MTAP deficiency is specifically, MTAP is specifically deleted. And there's also evidence that uh, MTAP can be uh, 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 downregulated by promoter methylation. Uh, secondly, Warren Kruger showed that uh, in knockout mice, uh, homozygous mice, it was embryonic lethal, but heterozygous MTAP um, knockout mice developed T cell lymphomas uh, late in their uh, lifespan. Finally, a transfection of MTAP uh, into uh, MCF7 breast cancer cells, which lack MTAP resulted in the inability of the cells to form tumors. So there's evolving evidence that uh, this is a tumor suppressor in itself. And uh, there's also data that shows that uh, homos uh, homozygous deletion of MTAP are more frequent than P16 for a homozygous deletion in small, non-small cell lung cancer. And uh, a recent paper shows that it's an independent prognosis marker, and the concordant loss of MTAP and P16 expression predicts short survival in non-small cell lung cancer. So clearly, it uh, has an important function as a uh, tumor suppressor. Uh, in lymphoma, in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, uh, the INC4A locus is deleted in a a high percentage of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma patients. Uh, 
We don't know about MTAP specifically, but presumably uh, MTAP is co-deleted in the high percentage of these patients, and also uh, especially in the uh, transformed aggressive variants. In mantle cell, there's an interesting uh, study uh, in which they looked at uh, MTAP expression in, uh, in mantle cell tumors. And uh, although a small percentage of these patients had deletion of MTAP, turned out uh, when they looked at the survival of those patients, uh, it was markedly uh, decreased as compared to uh, the patients who had those tumors had uh, expression of MTAP. Even back in 1981, uh, Dennis Carson uh, uh, published a paper in PNAS showing that uh, MTAP deficient cells are more sensitive to de novo purine synthesis uh, and methionine deficiency. And uh, that observation has been reproduced many times in different laboratories, including our own. And yet, uh, there was only one clinical study in which uh, patients with solid tumors uh, were treated with elalanacine, which is an inhibitor of IMP to AMP biosynthesis, uh, in, in patients who had MTAP specifically deficient cancer. And uh, of about, I think there were 40 patients here, there were no objective responses. 24% had stable disease, two patients with mesothelioma. At the conclusion was at this dose and schedule, Elalanacine was ineffective in patients uh, with advanced MTAP deficient tumors. So why didn't it work? Uh, well, they only treated solid tumors. And elalanacine was is an ineffective drug, and, uh, and it's been abandoned. Uh, phase two trials didn't show any activity. So they used an inact inactive drug uh, in the usual dose schedule, and they didn't see anything. Uh, they didn't uh, do any uh, pharmacodynamic studies to show that the drug was actually inhibiting AMP synthesis in the tumor. Did it really get into the tumor? And finally, there may be, uh, may be that there's some salvage of adenine or adenosine by the stroma, uh, and which uh, prevented its activity. So uh, as I said, we're interested in uh, T-cell lymphoma. Uh, recently, we published a little paper showing that even the uh, uncommon lymphomas have a high incidence of MTAP deficiency. Uh, angioplastic lymphomas, uh, anaplastic large cell. Uh, and as you can see, there are very high incidence of MTAP deficiency in lymphoma. So that we have pursued studies uh, in uh, T cell lymphoma in our laboratory. This is an example uh, showing uh, that if we take a cell line which lacks MTAP, the CEM cell line, and compare it to another cell line which has MTAP, there is a marked difference in sensitivity to uh, 6-thioguanine, a de novo inhibitor of purine biosynthesis. There's also somewhat of a difference uh, in uh, this compound, uh, pralotrexate, which is a methotrexate analog, which is used to treat T-cell lymphoma. And so we've, uh, we've used pralotrexate in our studies. And the reason for that is that, as Bruce Chapner showed many years ago and with his colleagues, that uh, methotrexate and presumably pralotrexate are converted to polyglutamates in cells, and they then become inhibitors of de novo purine synthesis. Uh, we've also knocked down MTAP in the MOLT4 cells, and they become sensitive, and we've added MTAP to CEM cells, and they become uh, more resistant. So what about in vivo? Phil Tedeschi, our graduate student who's here, did, uh, looked at the effect of uh, uh, prolotrexate and 6 thioguanine in tumors and xenografts uh, in the mouse. Um, and as, you, as shown in this first part of the slide, the CEM cell line is much more sensitive to prolotrexate uh, then is the MOLT4 cell line, the one that has MTAP. And surprisingly, uh, the MOLT4 cell line actually grows in the presence of 6 thioguanine as compared to CEM cell line, which is still very sensitive to 6 thioguanine in vivo. 
So we thought, well, maybe we can use a combination of uh, six thyroid guanine and also pralotrexate in cells. And so when we used uh, optimum combination, uh, optimum doses of these drugs, uh, we got very nice tumor regression. But as you can see in the green line there, uh, the tumors really disappeared rapidly, but the animals died because it was a toxic uh, combination. So uh, by looking at different dose schedules of 6 thyroguanine and uh, adding leucovorin rescue to the pralotrexate, we would then develop a safe and effective schedule uh, in the uh, CEM uh, xenograft cell line. And I won't go through this with you, but basically um, uh, by uh, adding leucovorin and uh, decreasing the, the schedule for 6 thyroguanine, we could get uh, great tumor regression without uh, sufficient, without much toxicity. Our conclusions are that MTAP tumors are more sensitive to prolotrexate and 6 thyroguanine than MTAP positive tumors. The combination resulted in improved tumor response, and that was due to the fact that we used leucovorin rescue. Uh, in another study that we published recently, we showed that leucovorin rescue, like uh, rescue of methotrexate, uh, leucovorin rescue for prolotrexate is even more effective, causing decreased toxicity without compromising the endotumor effects. And a shorter course of 6 thyroguanine allowed the combination to be better tolerated. And so, uh, we have now uh, generated a clinical study using this combination, which has just been approved by RRB. The clinical study, uh, the rationale is uh, what I've uh, um, already enunciated, that pralotrexate, when polyglutamated, inhibits de novo purine synthesis. Leucovorin rescue de decreases pralotrexate toxicity, allows higher doses, of pralotrexate to be administered, and 6 thyroguanine inhibits de novo period synthesis. And the clinical study will use a fixed dose of pralotrexate, and starting with low doses of 6 thyroguanine, we will increase the 6 thyroguanine dose to get a MTD, and uh, it'll be uh, in patients with refractory T cell lymphoma. A part two of this uh, presentation is that. Uh, can we protect normal tissues, but not MTAP-deficient tumors, from 6 thyroguanine with methylthioadenosine pretreatment to allow higher and more effective doses of 6 thyroguanine and prolotrexate to be administered? And this, uh, this idea uh, uh, was generated by our colleague uh, Martin uh, Lubin, uh, who's uh, uh, in the audience today. So uh, again, the same slide shows the rationale for this, and that is that uh, in the presence of methylthioadenosine phosphorylase, uh, if one gives methylthioadenosine, you load up the cells with an ad adenine. As a consequence, adenine, you have a higher concentration of adenine in cells. It uses up PRPP, so there's less available for the conversion of 6 thyroguanine of fluorouracil into nucleotides. So MTA pretreatment then decreases the amount of nucleotides in the cytotoxicity of these drugs. In the absence of MTA, uh, there is less uh, PRPP used by adenine, and in fact, fluorouracil and 6 thyroguanine are more effectively uh, converted to nucleotides. So, does it work? This is a study that uh, Martin Lubin and his son did uh, several years ago, and it shows that uh, uh, by pretreating mice with methylthioadenosine, 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams, uh, one can protect mice from a lethal dose of 6 thyroguanine. In the presence of MTA, 50 milligrams per kilogram, uh, a lethal dose of 6 thyroguanine is completely obviated. And even uh, two doses of 6 thyroguanine, days one and four, if one precedes this by 
100 milligrams per kilogram of uh, methyl thioadenosine, the animals are protected from uh, lethal toxicity. So this uh, small experiment shows that uh, not only can you protect uh, from a, a lethal dose, but by even can, can protect uh, super lethal doses uh, from uh, six thyroiding toxicity. In another experiment done by our colleagues at Southern Research, a small um, animal toxicity experiment, uh, showed that you can also protect uh, from a lethal dose of fluorouracil by pretreating the animals with uh, methyl thioadenosine, uh, shown here, in either giving the drug before uh, uh, fluorouracil or uh, giving the drug at two different schedules before and after fluorouracil. So uh, does this, uh, can you show this uh, actually in these two cell lines I described before, one which uh, has uh, MTAP and one lacks MTAP. And uh, so this slide very nicely shows that the CEM cell line, which uh, lacks MTAP, by giving methyl thioadenosine uh, before 6-thioguanine has no effect on the lethality of, uh, of the 6-thioguanine. In contrast, the molt 4-cell line, which uh, has intact M-type, is uh, protected from the lethal effects of 6-thioguanine by uh, pretreatment with methyl thioadenosine. So this is, an, this is kind of a surrogate for uh, normal cells. So in an experiment that we published in uh, cancer biology and therapeutics, uh, we did the same experiment in, uh, in mice bearing the CEM tumor. And what this uh, slide shows is that uh, mice with, uh, treated with uh, MTA alone or control mice, uh, the tumor grows very rapidly. And uh, starting treatment when the tumors were fairly large with 6 thioguanine alone uh, resulted in two good tumor regression, but the animals died from toxicity, uh, given every four days for three doses. By pretreating the animals with um, uh, uh, methyl thioadenosine, the animals uh, were able to, uh, uh, we showed good tumor regression. Um, and, but the animals survived very nicely from uh, this lethal dose of 6 thioguanine. And uh, if one looked at the toxicity, the uh, combination of methyl thioadenosine and 6 thioguanine in this case was essentially non toxic as compared to the uh, 6 thioguanine alone, which caused the animals to die from toxicity. In another experiment, um, we wanted to know whether we could use the two drugs together and get the same result. And in this experiment, animals were treated with uh, the combination of 6 thioguanine plus or minus uh, methyl thioadenosine, shown here, or prolotrexate alone. And what this shows is that by giving 6 thioguanine five doses with uh, prolotrexate in two doses, very much like our clinical study we're proposing. The combination uh, is lethal without methyl thioadenosine. With methyl thioadenosine, we get very nice tumor regression. And this is labeled wrong, but if one looks at the weight of the animals treated with uh, uh, the two drugs together or the two drugs pretreated with methyl thioadenosine, you can see that the animals tolerated the treatment very well without any uh, marked uh, weight loss. Another um, uh, study uh, which is quite interesting in terms of the, u the use of this combination in solid tumors uh, was uh, published in uh, 2012 by the group in, uh, in Canada, Dr. Collins and his colleagues. And uh, they did, uh, they were interested in uh, sequencing prostate cancer cells uh, with uh, the next generation sequencing. And one of the patients of the 50 they sequenced turned out to have a methyl thioadenosine uh, phosphorylase deficiency. And they contacted Martin Lubin and myself because they saw our paper 
with the uh, MTA protection of 6 thalaguanine toxicity. And um, it turned out this patient's tumor was a neuroendocrine tumor. And uh, uh, what was interesting was that they then sequenced another uh, eight neuroendocrine tumors in prostate, and five of the eight turned out to have MTAP deficiency. Uh, whereas only one of um, 40 or 50 uh, non-endocrine prostate tumors had an MTAP deficiency. Uh, so oh, they were able to grow this tumor in the kidney capsule. Uh, so they, uh, as I say, contacted uh, Martin Lubin and myself, and they used the same dose schedule that we use with MTA protection in these kidney capsule tumors. And uh, what they found was that uh, just using this exactly same schedule, comparing it with saline control, they were able to get uh, growth uh, inhibition of these uh, uh, neuroendocrine tumors in the, in the kidney capsule and showed that there was an increase in, uh, in apoptosis by caspase 3 expression in the tumors that were treated with MD and 6 thyroguanine. Now, of course, this is only one dose schedule they didn't increase the dose of thioguanine, and, and so that uh, by optimizing things, they possibly could have even done a little bit better. What about 6 thioguanine? Well, uh, this comes from uh, the publication in, <laughs> in The Oncologist. And 6 thioguanine has been a, pretty much of a failure uh, in patients with uh, solid tumors. We looked uh, at the literature and almost all the studies were done with a single dose schedule, five days of uh, 6 thioguanine given uh, uh, parenterally. And there were a few uh, responses, but uh, in general, uh, as you can see, uh, except maybe for breast cancer where there are a couple of complete remissions, uh, 6 thioguanine in the dose and in the schedule they used was essentially in inactive. So uh, the question is, can you do better if you were able to increase the dose of 6 thioguanine effectively by using methylthioadenosine pretreatment? So our proposed follow-up protocol, if we can get somebody to make methylthioadenosine for us, <laughs> is to use the same protocol uh, using methylthioadenosine pretreatment followed by 6 thioguanine and uh, prolotrexate leucovorin. And the question is, will the increase in doses that you can give, and we don't know how much of an increase in dose is going to be tolerated, will that enhance the tumor response? And uh, the uh, second question is, will the increase in doses be effective in solid tumors lacking MTA? I think these are important questions and that uh, uh, we hope to uh, uh, stimulate uh, others as well as ourselves to try to answer these questions. So just to end up on this and uh, just to emphasize what I just said, uh, what dose is best to use, what doses uh, 6-DG can be tolerated using MDA pretreatment, or 6 thioguanine plus or minus prolotrexate, the best de novo purine synthesis to be used. Uh, and uh, what about this salvage uh, issue? Uh, would salvage from ATP and adenosine decrease effectiveness? Uh, Adenosine is not around very long in cells because it uh, uh, has a very uh, marked effect on cells. Would a nucleoside transport inhibitor affect the increase the effectiveness? So um, thank you uh, for listening. Uh, Phil Tedeschi, the graduate student, did most of this work with two Rutgers students, uh, Yamini Kathari and Ikra Faroki. Uh, Nadine is our technician, and Martin Lubin has been a uh, co-collaborator uh, and co-investigator in these studies. And uh, this is a picture of, the, of, of Phil and the two graduate students, uh, Ikwa and Yamini. This is the way we go to work every day at the Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Thanks very much.
So, Joe, it's really interesting. We've always been puzzled by the fact that uh, purine antagonists are so active in, in T cell lymphomas of all kinds. So, you know, uh, deoxycofermycin, uh, fludarabine, cl clofarabine, on and on. Um, I wonder if it's because many of these tumors are MTA, MTAP deficient, and therefore salvage, uh, the salvage pathways are very active in these patients. Uh, yeah, and one of the uh, one of the questions that we hoped to answer, but we couldn't get the tissue, is the prolotrexate experience in T cell uh, lymphoma. Are those patients that responded well, are they MTAP deficient patients? Oh, that would be a nice correlation to make. Do you have an assay, a selective a selection assay for these Yeah, we, um, there's a nice immuno, uh, uh, immunologic assay. We do, uh, yeah, a peroxidase assay. So uh, our, um, you know, 5 few is back in favor again in pancreatic cancer. Um, have, have we looked at some of these older drugs and MTA deficient tumor types to see if it if there's a differential response? Uh, colon cancer unfortunately doesn't have a high percentage of MTAP deficiency. Um, uh, pancreatic cancer does and that would be interesting to relook at in terms of uh, using that combination. Okay. So the, uh, the computational biology community has been uh, very excited about MTAP deficiency because they can predict metabolic networks, and this is the classic example that they always use to say, can we predict synthetic lethality? And I have to say, personally, I've been under-impressed with what they've come up with, so I thought I would, but I thought I would ask you, as someone who's thought a lot about this, do you have favorite, like, you know, your beautiful work has really been around existing drugs. If you could start from scratch, is there another enzyme that one might be able to take advantage of in MTAP deficient cells? I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on that. Um, no. <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, certainly uh, there are some inhibitors of polyamine biosynthesis. And uh, maybe there are some possibilities there. We haven't really thought much about it yet. Yeah. I think the question that was just asked uh, preempted my, but uh, you know the old vessel gag uh, of, of ancient times uh, was an inhibitor of polyamine uh, uh, metabolism. And uh, the question then is, would that, would that drug or other polyamine inhibitors that were developed later, uh, would they increase the toxicity of thioguanin uh, because of reduced MTA? Yeah, we thought about using, uh, you know, the polyamine inhibitors, but really haven't done much. I think that's an interesting uh, area to pursue, yeah. Joe, a lot of this depends on whether there's a real differential between normal tissue and tumors that are in, in the MTAP deficient tumors. In animals, how, how much can you escalate the dose of, uh, of 6 thalguanine or 6-MP, for example, uh, and still rescue with MTA? And would that give you a bigger... Um, uh, advantage by doing that? I mean, really significantly escalate? Uh, we, haven't, we haven't really done that experiment yet. I think that's a worthwhile experiment doing. Uh, it's, clearly, it's clear that we can escalate it twofold at least because the, uh, the animals will tolerate half of that dose of 75 milligrams per kilogram. Um, that's the M, that's the MTD maybe 10 20 percent, uh, so that we, by giving twice that dose we can rescue him completely with uh, uh, you know, so can you tolerate can we tolerate three times or four times the dose, is that going to make a difference in terms of anti tumor effect effect of this and uh, uh, that's what we have to say yeah. In which type of breast cancer did you see the complete responses? Um, the, the incidence of MTAP deficiency in breast cancer is about 20%. Um, 
the MCF7 cell is a cell line that lacks MTAP. Um, uh, we haven't done much in terms of breast cancer, though. It would be it would be a nice uh, model to look at with fluorouracil as well, but we haven't done that. In the slide you showed, where you summarize the results of the clinical the clinical result, you as if I read the slide correctly, you show complete responses only in breast cancer. There were two complete responses, and so I was wondering whether. The, what type of breast cancer were these? Oh, these are very old data, uh, uh, 15, 20 years ago. So I don't think uh, we knew what the subgroups of breast cancer were in the <laughs> 15 years ago. Don't know.